Dr. Jaeger, thank you very much for making us feel so welcome at uh, Stockholm this year. Um, as president of the European Haematology Association, um, what has most excited you at this meeting? What have been the main highlights? The main highlights at this meeting, I think, is educationals. I have to say that I think our main strength is still educationals, and that may even be at the level of the American Society meeting. We have a wonderful selection of speakers and chairs, and I think people appreciate that very much. Uh, that also relates uh, to our CME activities and to curriculum which we have developed. In, on the research level, uh, we have been struggling during recent years with the best abstracts because people tended to send their best work to ASH or to ASCO. Uh, or to Lugano, which is uh, this year very close. Um, however, I have to say that this year uh, we were very pleased to see that there are outstanding abstracts and uh, what we were also lacking is clinical trials and uh, we, we are very pleased to say that there are clinical trials in the best abst abstract session. Uh, the uh, exciting developments mainly relate to new drugs I would say, antibodies, um, uh, emits, um, new inhibitors, kinase inhibitors, and those are well represented uh, in the best abstracts in various diseases. Now, you yourself um, have presented details of the NHL 13 clinical trial, which was um, in aggressive B-cell lymphoma. Can you describe that study and uh, outline what your main findings were? The major question here is when you have a patient uh, who has an aggressive lymphoma, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, in remission, can you prolong that remission or prevent relapse by applying a maintenance treatment? And uh, there was one previous study in patients over 60, which was the ECOG 4494 study, which showed that this treatment has no effect. So observation versus maintenance was no difference. Um, that's why we started uh, several years ago. I think the first patient went on trial in 2004. <laughs> Uh, we uh, started a clinical trial exploring that randomized. It, uh, we tried to have it as close to clinical practice uh, as possible. So it was RCHOP uh, 6, RCHOP 8 times, uh, depending on the clinical stage and on the preference of the investigators. And that was followed by a two year period of uh, rituximab maintenance. Um, the primary endpoint was event free survival. And the p-value on that event-free survival is 0 0.06, which means the primary endpoint was not met. Uh, and you could say the study is negative. However, uh, when we looked into the plant subgroup analysis, we saw that there are populations where it's clearly profit. And those uh, populations uh, are the low risk, IPI low uh, patients. Uh, and uh, they are mainly younger patients, which is interesting. So, uh, and also what we saw as a significant finding is that uh, applying rituximab maintenance prevented relapse uh, by 45%, which is a significant number, uh, but in statistical terms, it was not different. So um, I think what the significance of this trial is that we've shown that uh, there is an effect. The effect is strong in subgroups and that we should explore this treatment further in these subgroups. We could clearly define some subgroups where there is no use and that's in line with the uh, previous study which was done in the US. So the results of this um, study, although as you say, some people might think it was a negative outcome, uh, does it not reinforce the argument that um, such strategies can be applied as personalized medicine to some groups of patients? Uh, I think that's uh, perfectly true. However, I would stress that we still need 
another randomized trial in order to show that. Uh, because now if we pick the subpopulation and if, if we clearly show in an intelligent way in this uh, subpopulation that there is a significant effect, then of course uh, I would recommend to use it. Uh, and that would mean that only, let's say, 25% of patients who have a diffuse large B cell lymphoma, a well-defined subgroup, uh, will have a benefit from it. That's in line with uh, individualized treatment. Uh, but we need more evidence. I think uh, as researchers we would have to say that. <laughs> and finally, um, you handed over the presidency of the EHA on Saturday. Um, what would you like to see over the next 12 months before uh, EHA meets again in Milan, both in terms of the organization itself and in terms of new clinical developments? I think the organization itself is uh, very healthy. We are a European organization and uh, that of course enable us to act on the European level uh, to help the European hematologists and, and what we are currently doing is we are advocating for more research money. We are trying uh, to establish a curriculum uh, all over Europe, the same uh, curriculum for, for young doctors. Um, we are also involved in um, advocacy with patient organizations, which I think is also very important. We have in many uh, instances the same questions uh, and we would like to develop that further. Uh, but the main points are uh, certainly research and education. And that will be developed through our programs, which are, I think, excellent. And in terms of clinical advances? Clinical advances, I, I think, uh, as, as a, let's say, political organization, of course, we would like to see that um, investigator-driven academic trials are made easier in Europe because that's one of the problems we have, and that's why we also participate in actions in order to uh, facilitate these trials. The Clinical Trials Directive is in revision and I think that's one of the tasks that an organization like ours can do, facilitate for our hematologists' uh, clinical trials. Is there any one blood disorder over another that is really um, in need of more research, do you think, at the moment? Um, maybe if I can make two comments. Um, what I would like to stress is that hematology is not only malignant hematologic diseases, so there is a lot of uh, non-malignant, uh, non-oncological diseases, uh, which we sometimes tend to forget, like anemias, like inborn errors, uh, where we have a lot of things uh, to research, pediatric hematology. Um, we've seen interesting abstracts at this meeting looking at uh, granulocytopenia. Um, that's one thing and of course uh, the other thing that will probably happen is that um, through the fragmentation of the, the subgroups we will have a lot of orphan diseases like T-cell lymphomas for instance where we don't have a decent uh, second line treatment um, and those would be the areas where we have to develop and uh, elderly patients so ne next year uh, the theme of the year is uh, hematology in elderly patients and that of course uh, will also be one of our targets. Dr. Jaeger, thank you very much indeed.